Marconi's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart, and this week we sit down with a dusty hunter. This hobby, uh, the the gold mine, you know, the general path of a bourbon enthusiast is someone who's mixing it first and then drinking with ice and then drinking neat and then drinking expensive... Uh, and then eventually you give up on the pappy and you give up on the blends and you realize that the, the gold mine and the delicious nectar and bourbon has to do with old bottles that are no longer around. Old distillation methods, old growth oak, uh, cypress fermenters versus stainless steel tanks. There's a whole slew of reasons speculated as to why old bourbon was better. Not old in age, not 35-year-old bourbon. We're talking bourbon that was distilled 35 years ago. Uh, 80s, 70s, 60s. I mean, it, it goes back further and further. The love and passion for Dusty's uh, is only superseded by the people who get to still find them in real life, find them in liquor stores. And there are people who dedicate their life, their time, uh, sometimes doing it full time as a job, will travel the world looking for old bottles of bourbon uh, because they are highly valuable. You can skip all that. Go to Facebook, go to an auction house, and spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars on a bottle and save yourself the time and trouble. Other people will take the time, they'll do the research, they'll travel around the U.S., find a bottle still sitting on the shelf in some dusty backwoods liquor store that's been around for the last 40 years, pay pennies on the dollar for it, and then if they wanted to, they could turn around and sell it for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So it's a a tremendous tremendously exciting uh, hobby and for those of you who've ever watched me interview a celebrity I always try to bring a birth year bottle so that I can open a bottle with them and make it special and one of the people that I buy from quite frequently is joining us today his name is Robin McAdams he is probably King Dusty of Texas if I had to put a title to it he has picked he's been to every single liquor store within the state of Texas and that is saying something so today we're joined by longtime co-host Todd Groob, Robin McAdams, and we talk Dusties, where to find them, how you find them, when you found them, and maybe some of his more uh, idealistic finds. So uh, without further ado, I don't have a sponsor read for you guys. Waterford is our Irish whiskey sponsor sitting right here. Uh, big fan. Can't wait to talk more on that. But uh more to come on Waterford in future episodes. In the meantime, please welcome Todd Groob and Robin McAdams. Cheers. Robin, buddy, thanks so much for doing this. You have been my drug dealer for the <laughs> uh, last couple of years. Uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, which will be covered in the intro as well, that the, the art of dusty hunting Finding these old bottles from a bygone era is something that is, has a devout following for some. There's some people who will literally take weeks and months off from their day job to go hunting uh, all over the U.S. for bottles and uh, even at times doing it full time. Some people do this. Uh, in fact, most recently, a gentleman in California found Cecil B. DeMille's bourbon stash from the 70s, 80s, I mean, a lot of old crazy bottles. Yeah, that's right. And uh, they're they're highly valuable, they're very expensive, and we, I've been using you for, at, at least in part, for some of the Whiskey Social bottles. Every year for the Whiskey Social, the way that we operate is we operate without a license, and we're the only event in the state of Texas that actually features dusty vintage bottles of bourbon uh, that you yourself have tracked down. You, in fact, I, I've said this before. You are arguably the reason why Houston is picked dry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're gonna make a lot of enemies. Make, make, bring the mic up. You're gonna make a lot of enemies with me. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 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 no enemies, no enemies. But 
yeah, you've 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 picked Houston over pretty good. I uh, well, yeah, I, I I think I've been to every um, liquor store in Texas uh, that was open that's opened before 2008. Wow. Um, but uh, the way I sleep at night is I make a point of not actually rating everything when I if I find something or if I find a lot of something, I make sure to leave something plenty. behind. Yeah, I make sure to leave plenty behind. Or if you know I, I go back to the store every few months, I might take another bottle. But I don't really like. I feel I feel like there's some bourbon karma there. I don't like. I don't like taking everything. Everything. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. greedy. I don't want to do that. So you, you actually, uh, not that long ago, I, I think I met you at a brewery, and we were uh, in the parking lot. I was buying some wild turkey decanters from you. Yeah. And uh, you you had told me that you had uh, done quite a bit of research in advance, weeks, months, if not, mm-hmm. uh, and traveled to Chicago. Uh, spent. I mean, you lived there for a little bit, just pit, just playing where where in the world is Carmen San Diego with with old dusty bourbon why Chicago uh, um, that's a good question I um, I was looking at I started researching major cities basically and um, I've been you know to LA and San Francisco and, and a couple of other couple other towns and uh, when I was looking at Chicago it's kind of you know it's kind of famous for not having you know Al Capone and, and you know breaking rules of prohibition so you know, I, I knew that uh, bourbon went pretty far back in that area, uh, but um, what really got me convinced was when I started to research uh, the the liquor licenses and the licensing system in Illinois. Um, there really isn't a very organized one, and they seem to they, they seem to go based off of county by county instead of having a, a centralized system. And so that kind of convinced. I mean, so when I started digging even further into it, I learned that there is somewhere around. 700 active off-premise liquor licenses in Cook County alone. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, just by the sheer numbers, I, fe- I felt like that was that was worth investing my time and, and energy and money. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you 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 basically dropped everything, uh, traveled up there. You, you told me one story where you a lot of places up there either used to be liquor stores or are currently liquor stores but they have these basements just <laughs> full of stuff that has been collected over the years yeah. uh, that has gone lost like no one's paid attention to it and you you kind of bribed a little guy and, and got to go down and check out his stash and yeah. uh, you found a lot of like crazy bottles it, it's something that is uh, it was romantic actually it was super exciting yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's a, it's the chase it's, it's just is that what you mean by off premise liquor license uh, I mean, it means it means you the pre, on premise is a bar because right. you're meant to drink on premise yeah, off premise right. is you buy a liquor bottle you go home and drink it you're not it. allowed to drink it there you by have. the way you should know that for the social gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like all liquor stores are, are off premise but, um, but uh, gotcha. what's what makes it actually more confusing is that in Illinois they have some mix on, on off premise where you can buy bottles and drink it there Kentucky's the same way Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we were in a bar and and they we got to order drinks and then take bo- barrel picks home of four roses. Oh, Remember when yeah. we were there, we we bought a bunch. So yeah. it's a pretty neat idea and it, it it's it's crazy when you leave Texas and you see how, how much more liberal some states are. Yeah. And you realize why are we not doing this? Yeah. This makes perfect sense. The closest that I've seen is in Austin, um, uh, Nickel City. They have the stores directly next to it. Um, so you can drink it and then walk literally next door. Ten feet. Yeah. Go, yeah. yeah. It's so stupid. Uh, yeah. Missouri is the same way. And so is uh, Louisiana and some spots. Um, actually, half, half of Louisiana is, is actually dry. I, 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 don't, I, I never knew that until I started really digging into mm. the, the licenses there. But um, half the counties or the, uh, what, what are they called? The parishes. Th- thank parishes. You, yeah. Half the yeah. parishes are actually dry parishes there. Um, Archaic. But, uh, Archaic shitholes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, yeah. The uh, so that that um, place that you're talking about, um, I that was an awesome find. I mean, just the building looks. Well, I've thought about it for for uh, even now. I mean, that was months ago, and you told me. Yeah. And yeah, it's funny. So, just a few years ago, back at the early stages of HBS, I there were a few locations in Houston. Everyone was picking them over. Evergreen and, and Sugarland had a <laughs> uh, shit, pardon my language, a shit ton of product, uh, early 90s turkey. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, mm. and that store was packed to the gills full of dusty bottles. And now uh, it is, I, I've told everyone now, because there's people, because it's funny, when you get in this hobby at first, you do that. You go liquor store to liquor store, you look for those hole in the walls and you look for things you, you wouldn't normally find. And people ask me now, where should I look? I said, you shouldn't look. Houston's done. 
Texas is done. You, no, Houston's not done, man. Uh, it's really not. I mean, I found I found this, uh, just uh, about a month ago. Well, actually, a few weeks ago, I found some uh, pre-fire uh, Dand? Uh, private seller. Uh, some uh, like from '92, uh, sure. right when they bought it from Glenmore, uh, I found some some 200 milliliters of those. A lot of people overlook 200 milliliter and 375 milliliter bottles. I found some awesome bottles. Hey man, I'm one, I'm one of your number one customers. What's up? You can't throw a tip my way. Um, yeah, okay. You know what? Uh, I would say one of my, one of the best one of the best stores that I keep going back to and the people are great is Lobby. Believe this. Yeah. Chris, now you have like four days to go get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I mean, so Lobi, Lobi Liquor is, uh, I mean, I, I know it's been mentioned on HBS a, a couple of times as a place to, I think, pack uh, pack heat if you're going to go. But um, it's, I don't think it's that bad. And uh, sure. the, the, the owners are really cool. So that store has been around since 1984 uh, with the original the original owners. Um, Evergreen is, uh, I'm, yeah. Uh, Still a great place to shop, regardless of it being pick dry, but. Uh, yeah, that's where I found the private seller, actually. Yeah. Um, so Ev- Evergreen still has, you gotta, look, you gotta know, you gotta look for yeah. it. But, um, and it's also about having fresh eyes. Uh, you know, just a few months ago, oh, about maybe eight months ago, I found uh, some chartreuse from the early 70s, mm-hmm. just in a wine bin, just sitting out in a yeah. wine bin, not even behind the counter with the rest of the liquor. And the owner had no idea that it was even there. Yeah, uh, he let me have it for free. Hmm. Um, That's awesome. You, yeah, I mean, like, so you, you can still find, you can still find some things. So when did this pick up for you? Like um, when, when did you? I mean, I know there were moments and times that you really committed some time to this. When did when did you really jump into this? And, and so when when did you? F- you said you've been to every liquor store in Texas. Well, that's yeah, I've been open before two thousand eight. When did um, you complete that? Like, uh, when did you really get into it? That's a Hmm, that's, I don't know exactly when I completed that. I, I'd, prob- I'd say probably spring of last year, um, maybe summer of last year is when I. But you've been at this for at least three years. Yeah, I started in, um, in the, at the end of 2016, or, yeah, or early 2017, and um, I kind of got into it because I was the I was the sales manager for a uh, for a local brewery at the time, and so um, I was driving all over the place trying to Anyways, get beer yeah. into wherever I could, and so I ended up at, at liquor stores. So if, if if you had such if you had a list of every store, I assume that you keep good records of everything. Yeah. So, so do you know what what's the hit rate? I mean, you know, when you're out of a hundred stores, how often do you find something? That's that's a good question. Um, most stores, I, it depends what you mean by find something. Like, so I'm not looking for worth your time. Uh, you walk in, you see some uh, handles, so, uh, some right. old. This late. is I don't and I don't mean to be like skirting the question. Um, your tastes change, and you start looking for different things. So you actually, you know, you, you go to a store and you don't, and you don't see anything you like. But then, five months later, you go back to that store, and there's something that you didn't catch or that you are into now. And all of a sudden, that store that w- that you didn't find anything at is a great store. It's a great store. So yeah. that's you know, I've, I've encountered that a lot with getting into tequila lately. Um, I'm going back to all this because the first year and a half, two years, I didn't look at all at any. Yeah. So now I have to go back through all the stores and look for the tequila. Yeah, and for those who didn't catch that, you, you started collecting dusty bourbon, and you've now found a crap ton of dusty tequilas and other liqueurs. Like yeah. you, you've you your first time through, you were just finding bourbon to. Uh, yeah. And 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 last time we talked, I think you said you're sitting on. A, a, at any given moment in the year, sometimes 2,000 bottles. Not that much, but yeah, you know, maybe 1,500. 1,500 so. bottles. Yeah. Uh, what's the most you've had at one time? Um, probably around 1,800. Uh, that's including my mini collection. Um, I mean, I know, uh, at least for the social, we uh, every time we would interact, you know, it's a few thousand dollars of bottles and cool dusty. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something that... Uh, uh, there's no other way to experience it in our state, unfortunately. Either you're the one taking the time off to go hunting, or and you're. Yeah. But either way, you're not getting it in a bar. You're not getting it anywhere else. So, uh, it's something that I've really enjoyed. And I, now that we actually have bottles, uh, I'd like to pour something if you guys want to have a drink. Let's yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do it. So this is interesting because this is these are these are imports. So you're not gonna. A lot of, you're not going to find these when you go if you go hunting around. Yeah, this is an Italian export Old Crow uh, Traveler that I picked up recently, and uh, back when they had screw tops. Uh, and of course, you, you just can't go wrong with Old Crow; it's delicious. Yeah. Yeah, I actually found some uh, Old Crow Chessmen um, about two months ago at a store, and 
I haven't I haven't cracked it yet, but I, I, I there was like 15 of them there. Um, I bought two of them. I left the rest. You need to Thank you. Um, thanks. Yeah, if you don't want this class, then it's gonna be a dumb class. I got another class over here. Yeah, you you found old code chessmen at, at retail. Uh, well, it was a it was at a, it was at a, a retail liquor store, and the owner has had that store since the 70s um and so he has hundreds of decanters uh some are empty some are full the old crows are uh i think mostly full some are empty and um yeah so I, I i bought a few yeah yeah i remember you telling me uh one of your recent trips you found a premise that was licensed but was now a bowling alley i think or a hardware store and you yeah and you saw in some storage high up yeah. the sides of an old wild turkey decanter box and he's like can i just can i just check to see what's in that box <laughs> yeah. yeah and they were decanters that had been stored up there for yeah years. it was, a, it was a, uh the 12 year i guess i was like the 1983 turkey maybe yeah i mean see, that's the stuff that no one else is really I know. Is looking for <laughs> so yeah that was a that was some sleuth work actually that that was with the help of some uh the, the manager at ralston's and um because he let me know so tabc uh, we'll only go back so far. And this, that hardware store was actually a liquor store that closed back in like 1982 or 83. So, or maybe it's been before. a hardware store ever since. It's been a hardware store and for the last 30 years. And it's just had liquor bottles in storage. Just the remnants of, yeah, just a couple of, a couple of different decanters. And, uh, and that was it just sitting there. Yeah. A little payday. That's awesome. Um, what, what's your, what's your favorite bottle or best you, you define that, uh, that you've ever found? So at the underground place in uh, Chicago Heights, um, that was one of my one of my best. I, I found a 1981 um, Old Fitz, just pretty much perfect condition. Um, that was a good one. Uh, you know, believe it or not, in Texas, I found just some um, in Beaumont. I found four bottles of 1985 Maker's Mark VIP. Um, well, I've seen you've had some of those Eagle Rare bottles as well. That uh, was in Houston. Yeah. I, I mean, was, I got found that, that found old makers taste so different. Yeah, so that's um, 1985 is the last year that it was the original guard. Um, bef- that was before I think um, Hiram Walker had purchased uh, purchase makers. So it was I think distilled by Hiram Walker af- from 1981 on. So after 1985, it's going to be a diff- completely different liquid. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so 85 is really the sweet spot because anything after that it is going to taste different. Mm-hmm. And it, early makers is unbelievable. You know, that's that's some of the best stuff. That's really that really is good. Um, it was unidentifiable. Somebody gave it to me blind. I had no idea. Yeah, I would have never guessed what it was. Yeah, he he was telling me that TBC. Obviously, anyone can look up a TBC license. And then there's your there's your map, right? Well, so yeah, as far as bourbon like dusty hunting goes, um, anybody can do it. You just have to kind of decide to to, to invest the time to, to to take the dive and really really dig into it but that goes for any state i mean this is licenses like that are all public it's all public information you just have to dig into it and find it somewhere find it on google you know just start researching it and you'll come across it like california has an amazing system so they also you know they have they have a lot of money behind it um texas has a great system there's an app you, the tabc app you can look at every liquor license in the, your vicinity like from where you're at uh louisiana not so much they don't have they yeah. don't have the Archaic funding. Archaic shithole. I said it earlier. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, basically anything before 2004, they're 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 lost. They're they're blind. But they're they're starting to get their act together. So hunting in Louisiana is a feat because um, you have to basically drive to every corner store, every bowling alley, every every grocery store, and you never know what you're going to find. Um, I found uh, some 1988 Weller Special Reserve um, at a bar, and and some Weller water, which I, I wouldn't suggest drinking, but. Um, and I found some 1999 Wellers, like three of them, at a, at a gas station in, where was it, Hammond, Louisiana? Just like some random gas station. And they they just, they had purchased it from somebody else, and they had those bottles, and they didn't know what they were going to do with it. They sold it to me. We took the family to Gonzalez in uh, middle of nowhere, Texas. And it, the tater in me still gets so excited being in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and seeing a liquor store. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so I, I have to stop by. I have to see what they got. And, of course, it's funny. It's a running joke right now in today's current environment for 
liquor store owners in Houston to crack jokes about how many times they get asked about Blanton's or Weller or Eagle Rare, right? Yeah. I walk into these these hole in the wall mom and pop liquor stores in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Just a look. I don't say anything. I don't ask for anything. First thing out of her mouth was, "We don't got any Wellers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got any Blantons." And I said, "Well, that's funny. Uh, we la- we laugh about that in Houston, but I'm just looking to see what you got." And and it the state is dry i still have not been able i used to i mean a lot of this is the part that sucked is a lot of people who work for the distributors who are already going into liquor stores they're there for a sales call once they learn to start picking over the shelves they Mm -hmm. got real thin pretty quick yeah uh it's something that we're eventually with the way things are going it's it's going to be impossible just to even find it on secondary because people are drinking them too all these are open and it's not quite dusty but i think you can still find earlier makes that taste different than the stuff today like like i've at a popular a very popular store um in houston i found some 2013 um russell's reserve rye um and and the bourbon single barrel from 2013 it tastes completely different than the stuff now so i mean i not dusty wouldn't call it dusty but sure. but there's st- that type of stuff i think is still out there well and that, and that term was is a popular store people just didn't it was the old label too so you would think that people would grab it and say hey what's this mm-hmm. the term is still evolving right yeah. so dusty used to mean something and to a lot of people of certain ilk and income Dusty still means the same thing. So, so I think we had a discussion on HBS about this. Um, what do you consider dusty? I, so yeah. my definition, I would say like even 90s and earlier would be the beginning of it. Um, but really, I, I picture this stuff as the true dusties. But, but there has like, to be time for like dust to actually collect and settle. I mean, dusty. Yeah. Is that it's, it yeah. Dust it, it originally meant, yeah, it was a shelf thing that sat yeah. there long enough to collect dust. But uh, the... I would argue that anything of at least, I don't, it's kind of like the subject of abortion, totally different plot twist, right? <laughs> wow. So a, just yeah. listen, play yeah. along, hold on. Yeah. Uh, on the subject of abortion, at some point I can see the argument being made that there is a life in there and we should protect that life. How did you make it? I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. You have to follow along. Listen. I was actually I, I, I'm listening. Yeah. So, I, so uh, at, at one point you can argue that it's not a life at another point you can argue it is a life but where that line is i don't know i don't feel as wrong or i don't feel guilty when someone uh uh early on you know like let's say first trimester whatever don't feel so bad third trimester i feel a little guilty because it definitely feels like there's a child there same thing with dusties i don't know where the line is I don't know where the line is. The line could be 2005, could we, be 2000. I, I think we crossed the line. Yeah, yeah. Really. yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, I'm getting canceled. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, I think a Dusty should be at least a couple labels before, right? Like at least a couple – labels change so often now that you, it, by that definition – That's interesting. Two, two labels, that means it, it's going to be quite a bit. And so at least five, ten they, years they ago. They changing that much back then. Like Ezra Brooks, uh, I consider Ezra Brooks like from the 90s uh, and, and earlier to be Dusty, but – the label's the same. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, maybe it got shinier. Well, it's like uh, the Elijah Craig label, right? That, that two labels ago, those bottles might be considered dusties. The 2013, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, the, you know, those sell for money. Those are the old, old labels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and really, 2013 was three labels ago. Slight tweaks were done where they moved the 12 to the back. Uh, so I don't know where the line is, is what I'm saying. I don't know there's a hard yeah. line. But uh, mm-hmm. while Turkey has changed the labels three times in the past five years, I wouldn't call any of those three Dusties. Well, but I also, would call Elijah Craig from late 2000, you know, 2011, I would mm-hmm. call that a Dusty. So Elijah Craig, um, I basically age dated age date yeah. uh, bottles is – that's well, the, it's like a different the old legal rare, than, than right? The old legal rare is. I mean, it's definitely a different conversation from abortion. But, well, but sure. <laughs> I uh, just, I just mean I don't know where the line is. It's, it's hard to call, crawl a, a, at a certain end of the spectrum. It definitely feels this could be considered dusty. Uh, the old uh, eagle rare, uh, ten year single barrel. Uh, that that, I think you know that's four years ago. And uh, you don't see those anywhere now, mm-hmm. right? And when you do, it definitely goes for a little bit more. I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to call these. I would definitely consider pre two thousands. Definitely consider those dusties. Are you talking about the old the old Prentice Tax strips? What's that? The old Prentice Eagle Rare? Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, just the, just the one from four years ago. They moved the tin to they took the tin Got off the neck yeah. of the neck and right. moved it to the back label. Right. Uh, that that wouldn't really be called the dusty, but if you've obviously found it. 
in a store, you'd be excited, just like Fighting right. Cock Six Year Age stated. That's four years ago. Uh, when yeah. you when you find that, you're like shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I found some half gallons of that in Houston uh, pre fire actually from like nine, bottled in '98, about two months ago. Um, my, I, back to the, what I was saying before, the, it's still out there. You you just have to go and know what know what to look for. Um, but uh, as far as like uh, dusty goes, I, I did want to ask you guys, um, why why does it taste better? What what's different? So about that was it? covered on a recent episode uh, we did when we were uh, somewhere recently. The discussion was made. So uh, in the mid 1980s, they everything before that the yeast component for distillation was actually a fertilizer, and that was outlawed because it's dangerous. Yeah. Right. So I I think when we try to recreate, you know, for instance, classic turkey, it was argued was it the change in cypress fermenters to stainless steel tanks? Was it the change in, in barrel aging young oak versus old oak? Even the wood on the barrels. Yeah. The age I mean, of the all wood. of these things are being speculated. When but when you try yeah, to I mean, recreate, that's what I was thinking. Cooperage. Mm -hmm. When you try to recreate the taste of Stitzelweller mm -hmm. or old uh, National Distillers. Right. Uh, their yeast component was fertilizer and that was outlawed and that's usually mm -hmm. around mid 80s was usually around that change changes is it's that when that was outlawed uh mid mid 1980s yeah i want to say 85 Did that have anything to do with uh with them selling off their portfolio or no no it was outlawed i don't think the government cares when you're selling products well i'm just so it was outlawed but did that affect the their oh, their I, i'm sure okay you know uh buffalo trace which is pro arguably the most successful bourbon distiller uses box yeast they don't give mm. a shit about uh, 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 cr saving a, a yeast culture like the way Heaven Hill does. You know, where after the fire, they literally carried a bucket of yeast out. Yeah. Mm. Um, Buffalo Trace uses box yeast. They somehow are the most highly coveted bourbon out there. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know what the the answer is. I did tell this distiller we were talking to that you should do a run with fertilizer, <laughs> but don't sell it. It's illegal to sell whiskey made from fertilizer yeast component. Don't sell it. If it's just an experiment, just do the R&D or do a distillation run with it and see if it yields a different result. You know? I, th I think part of the answer also could be because, you know, we, we talk about some of these older bottles and how the, the proof goes down slightly over yeah. time, right? Um, that also doesn't definitely. that change the flavor? Correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, it has that, to. that goes to old bottle effect, right? So the argument, and a lot of people confuse the argument when it comes to does my whiskey change after I open it? Uh, short term, no. Long term, yes. Sure. Yeah. So as the evaporation, as it slowly evaporates, which is why you start seeing whiskey turn cloudy, is the alcohol can no longer stave off bacterial growth. So therefore, you start seeing a much more cloudier product. Of course, it's going to affect the flavor. Mm -hmm. I always say that Dusty has kind of a glue note, like an old Elmer's glue. Uh, I, I get a distinct quality, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's Old Crow or Bourbon Supreme, I, or that I.W. Harper. It to me, I, it tastes like a Dusty Bourbon. Yeah, there's like, a, a, and, it's, and the finish gets extended somehow. Also, is there the the finish becomes longer is what I've noticed. With I, I also think with some of the best Dusties, um, and one of my favorites I brought is this Eagle Rare that I, I brought it because I, I hope we can kill it. Um, there's not much left in there. These, like the old Eagle Rare, the old Sitzel Weller. Beautiful stuff. I, I think it's, but but why it's so good, it's, I don't want to say that it's not complex or lacks complexity, but it has basic, it's the most basic bourbon sure. notes. It tastes like caramel and vanilla and a little oak. Yeah, yeah. And, Keep it and, simple. And so it's, it's but but there's end, nothing yeah. wrong with it. Like yeah. there are no flaws, but it's also not not nearly the most complex thing you'll ever taste. Um, and and you know lower proof. It, yeah, if you if you want it's complex, just a nice you to would drink. go for like Angel's Envy or something where it's going to be double you know, finished in lot, different the barrels. The port and, and everything going yeah. on in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot actually done to the spirit. Uh, so what's in the backpack? Uh, a whole lot of different things. Really. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, I, you know, so I uh, I wanted to try to bring something um, that I don't know if you've had it. You've probably had it, uh, but uh, it's my favorite bourbon actually and I've been looking for just the time to to crack it is um wow old Ezra yeah. 15 year show the camera uh, there's a camera yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay there's a camera <laughs> we we got a whole studio set up so you could just listen I just you know <laughs> that's wow I've never seen that um have you ever, you ever tried this no yeah so this is Ezra Brooks this is back before Ooh. um before there was sold to it currently i think it's currently heaven hill 
produced now, if that's right. But uh, uh, yes, that's correct. So uh, that right there is basically it's the same. Well, that I mean that's uh, old Virgin. You remember Virgin was mm-hmm. basically at Prefire Heaven Hill. Yeah. Uh, now it's the new uh, Heaven Here or Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. But uh, what's that medley? Uh, this is medley. Yeah. yeah. Owensboro. Um, yeah. So it, it, if it was, I have a bottle that goes back to to Hoffman um, from '69, but. Uh, the, and then the 1980 bottle that I have is actually, I think, distilled at Hoffman, bottled at Medley. But this is um, all Medley. And Medley is... Some of the best. Yeah, yeah. it's probably It's, probably it's arguably some of the best. I mean, yeah. it's up there for Stitzel Weller discussion. Uh, for the rye? Or yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Medley's just fantastic. So, well, yeah, let's definitely... So, it's not open, huh? No, the thing oh, about wow. this is we open, oh, when we open it, we got to let it breathe for a little bit because it's... Actually, we should try it right when we open it and then let it breathe because it's in, entirely different. After just like a let me five just see minutes. the bottle. Look at this yeah. beautiful box. So I have a, I have a few of not the fifteen year. I've got a few uh, of these old Ezra's. They're just they're so. Pardon my French. They're goddamn delicious. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, hundred proof, charcoal filter. What year is that? That's nineteen eighty two. Okay. So that was distilled in what like sixty sixty seven. Yeah. Rare old sip and whiskey. Interesting. Show the camera. Uh, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, this yeah. is an Can 83. Two 101s, but this is the 10 101. Yeah. Export bottle. No, 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 not export. It's That's our tax trip. It's old Prentice. Yep. It's uh, Lawrenceburg. Hey, this one doesn't yeah. actually say charcoal filter, huh? Um, no. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, so the ones uh, late yeah, 80s. Yeah, because didn't last time char- I was on, I think you had one that said yeah. charcoal. All the late 80s were charcoal. That happened, charcoal yeah. I think, when Glenmore purchased the portfolio. Yeah. But I don't think that it was charcoal filter when Medley was doing it. So Glenmore bought the portfolio in 1986, I believe. Um, and then in 87 or 88 is when the, it, Ezra actually won the International Spirits competition. So I got it out, but oh. that, that cork's breaking. Just that fly out. You may need a backup cork immediately. Okay. Yeah, it's broken. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's so. that's my favorite. That's my favorite stuff. Uh, this is a pretty close second, actually. And what does this retail for? Uh, what's the retail price? I'm sorry, not retail. What is this? <laughs> what like, is? Yeah, yeah. It was like three years old. What does Dusty sell for? Yeah. This Dusty, I would say what four hundred. I won't sell it. Uh, so I don't. I I mean, if uh, I've seen him go for around eight hundred. Eight hundred. Yeah. Fifteen year old. But I don't sell my bottles of uh, of fifteen year old Ezra. Yeah. That's it's the best stuff. Hmm. Uh, here you go. Yeah, I've never had eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Eight hundred bucks. Wow. That box is just killer too. Yeah, they really go all out. So it smells fantastic. I I love the story about Ezra. You know, Ezra Brooks is not a real (sighs) person. It was basically created because there was a shortage of Jack Daniels in 1956 or 55. So Ezra Brooks was created at uh, at Hoffman, and um, Jack Daniels sued them in federal court because it was it looked way too similar to Jack Daniels. Sure. But um, then Ezra Brooks ended up winning uh, in the end because it said Kentucky bourbon, or Jack Daniels says Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. And the judge awarded the victory to uh, Ezra Brooks. Yeah, the, um, the uh, Jack has never hesitated in, in a, a lawsuit over a package to sign. But, but their intention was to mimic Jack Daniels. Yeah. I mean, that was their, yeah. their set out goal. So I'm, you know, Jack Daniels is probably not wrong for being um, at least upset. Uh, yeah, put put off by that. <clears throat> yeah, this is just packed with flavor. This is awesome. It's gonna get way better in like five yeah. minutes. Also, yeah, yeah it's got this a, is uh, wow. I I have had it, but it's still amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a huge fan. Uh, again, speaking of Dusties. Was it three years ago they discontinued Ezra Brooks seven year and replaced it with? Uh, they brought it back, didn't they? they well, no, no, the the the, the, the barrel. Str- the yeah, barrel the, se- the seven year old one hundred and one. Yeah, the um. Yeah, they, yeah. It's now. It's now. What is it? It's barrel. I, I, now barrel that, proof. Barrel yeah, something. It's, bro, it's, it's barrel, something. I thought it was like one hundred one one twelve or one. Something. I'm trying to remember the new bottle shape. I, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, it's really well, good too. Well, the old one with the brown label is what I yeah. literally I stock. I have one perfect six pack case of them. Oh, nice! And I threw them in the the bunker, and they've been sitting there ever since, right next to some Heaven Hill. It's a round year. bottle. Yeah, I, yeah. The new one. The yeah. new one's round. Yeah, yeah. The, the seven year is just like just like that though. 
Um, I, have I, I can picture it, but I can't. I can't picture. We, we it. haven't gotten the name yet, but yeah, it's round. Um, yeah, I mean, anything Ezra. Uh, I and the problem is, I I get I got re so excited after trying this that I of course start sharing it, and now it's so super hard to find because all my friends when they find it they stock up. Of course, yeah, yeah that's and delicious. It's one of the, you know, it's it's really good. really good old bourbon. Mm -hmm. And what year was that from? Uh, bottled in eighty two. Eighty two. So it was. Uh, it's, it just it blows my mind how we had such a difficult time selling bourbon back then, and so all of these beautiful gems just sat there. Yeah, I don't know if it was such a difficult time. It there was so much of it, and uh, you know I don't know. They, they weren't selling a lot of it, and it was yeah. pretty. It was pretty inexpensive, and so they. I mean that's the whole reason decanters exist is because we would put right. them into everything to make them collectible, like right. Beanie Babies. It's yeah. interesting yeah. to look at yeah. the trends, you know, through the years to see what why weren't people drinking this because they were drinking something else that marketing just happened to hit, and that was like the thing that people drank. Uh, you know, yeah. the, and it changes through the years. And um, Also, I think when the housewives started drinking, uh, because they were not as into bourbon as they were into the clear uh, liquors, which became really popular in like, what, the 70s or something? Sure. Uh, or after the Cold War. Um, that was uh, when it was so vodka and gin, but mainly, mainly vodka, that became huge. And uh, that really kind of pushed this to the... To the side. Yeah. Which is so stupid. And it, uh, th recently there was some... some talk about uh, some large American whiskey collections going up for auction. Mm -hmm. People complaining, look at these idiots. You know, uh, bur any bourbon purist would be furious uh, and, and want to, you know, drink your bourbon, don't collect it. Well, I, I don't understand what the complaint is. If it was not for these people who were collecting whiskey during a time in which whiskey wasn't even being drank that much, we would not have access to them now. The whole reason I'm looking at a bottle from 82 is because someone collected it and didn't drink it. So I always ap applaud them because now this generation gets to experience old vintage museum pieces. It's a dead profile, it's a dead flavor profile. Yeah, um, not being recreated at all. Right, um, that's, uh, and that's part of why I think I really got into it. Um, I, I'm kind of a history history geek, I like to study um, American history and presidents and, and obscure presidents especially. Sure. And so I, you know, I've read a lot about various presidents that are mostly all closet alcoholics actually, uh, except for Trump, which is another reason. To Amazing, yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, he has a vodka named after him. Yeah. Um, but uh, it felt like almost just natural to start digging into the history of whiskey. So I, don't, I mean, I don't just go around collecting bourbon. And, sure. And, and, or flipping or anything. I mean, I really don't. I really try not to sell very, very much of it because I, I like keeping it. I like, I like right. having it. Um, and some of it I want to pass on to my kids. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a piece of it's a piece of Americana, really. Um, but it's, mom uh, used to collect roosters. What? My mom used to collect roosters, Americana, you know, tin, metal, like weather vane. Yeah, website? that sort yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. And, uh, I'm not going to make the joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my mom was a huge fan of Cox. <laughs> now the the uh, the the 100 percent agree with you. I, I've talked about it time and time again. These are time capsules. Yeah. Uh, it's so neat to be able to experience something like uh, Anthony Starr from uh, the episode we did from the boys. Uh, we got to drink whiskey. It was bottled the year he was born and everything he's ever accomplished in his lifetime, becoming a celebrity, being on the, the show, The Boys, a superhero, a supervillain, uh, everything you've ever accomplished in life happened while this liquid was literally frozen in time. Just, yeah. it's so neat to get to open it for the first time at 45 years old and taste something that's just uh, tremendously from a bygone era and unique. You and, know? and knowing that everybody, that like, you know, Woodrow Wilson, <laughs> was experiencing the same flavor that you were mm -hmm. experiencing, you know, just, just knowing that that was what people were drinking then and that they're not really drinking now. Um, At the second Whiskey Social, we got a bottle of scotch from World War II. It was bottled in 45, okay? We, at the time, he was living here. I tracked him down, got to know him. Uh, who was the prime minister during World War II? Uh, Churchill. Right, Winston Churchill. His great grandson. We got him to come to the whiskey social, and you can drink whiskey that was bottled when his great grandfather, at the height of World War II, with his great grandson. Hmm. Wow! It was the neatest little bit of tying history together and having yeah. drinks with him. Uh, he passed a couple years ago. Rest in peace. But uh, it, it's just 
yeah, everything about this hobby is the fact that uh, it's really, actually, truly special. Um, you bought some bottles from me for the Whiskey Social, I think it's for the Whiskey Social from like uh, 19, 1910? Oh, yeah, yeah, so the ginger brandy. Yeah, the yeah, ginger yeah, yeah, brandy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy so, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, so I, I've, I've used it a lot. How is it? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I've used it a lot recently. Um, I, uh, I opened it with Brendan Schaub and Brian Callen. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> And, uh, They're not dying after <laughs> trying. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Uh, Brian Callen got canceled, uh, accused of rape right after doing my show. Wow. <laughs> not on my show. Okay. Just okay. <laughs> Chris has a bad history of guests on the show and what he, happens to them afterwards. That's that's well, about the right. The abortion yeah. thing is, is making more sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, no, so he, uh, uh, we opened it with them, and then I also took it to uh, L.A. with me. And we made an old fashioned out of it. Uh, 1915 brandy, and then one of the bottles, I bought two of them from you. One of them we actually used at the social. We poured the whole thing this year at the event. Right on. Uh, so the other one has got about a third of it left. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, we got to drink whiskey, or sorry, ginger brandy from f 105 years ago. Yeah. Well, I think just as cool, uh, speaking of bottles from the whiskey social, um, the black tot rum. Oh, yeah. I mean, the story behind that, the, the, you know, this is what the sellers were drinking. Yeah, 1970, right? Yeah. So that's 50 years ago. Well, and it was distilled. I think that they said that it has as old as 30-year-old stuff in in the blend. Yeah, I'm not sure, but so some it, of it, it could have been distilled in the 40s. Age, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. on the age. I always I always thought it was longer, younger, like maybe eight to ten year. But yeah, I mean, it, it, they stopped doing that black tot rum in 1970 when uh, you know Black Tot Day. I think it was July 31st. But. Uh, we bought a ton of it, and it got to be open for the first time and experienced, and it's just and dude, from a flagon, yeah, from a flagon, a stone nice. flagon, yeah. yeah. Did you um, read any of the history of the uh, of the ginger uh, of the, the 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 ginger brandy? That no. Okay, um, I'll, I'll I'll send that to you. By the way, it's supposed to help with diarrhea. So the guy you that have too much of it. The distiller, um, the uh, the guy that he didn't actually distill it. He it, back then it was purchased from distilleries and, and blended. Um, he died from acute stomach uh, ailments of some kind. Um, Related is, to those? Uh, you know, one could. <laughs> well, or, yeah. I'm glad we took sips out of it then. Right. Yeah, so uh, one of them, w when we opened it, it had some cloudiness in it. We filtered it out. Uh, but we we drank uh, quite a bit of it. Never had any problems. Made old fashioned with it. it was I, awesome. I love how it has. What was the alcohol percent? It was like thirty seven percent or something. It was like thirty seven and twenty three one hundredths. Yeah, yeah. Something it, like it's that. It's some ridiculous small amount. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that's pretty accurate for you know, nineteen ten or nineteen fourteen. And for a hundred and fifteen year old or a hundred and five year old brandy, it was arguably probably below sixty proof. Yeah, I mean it it, hmm. it had, for it to be that cloudy. It, yeah. it, it definitely. I'm I'm willing to bet it lost some stuff. So you know where I I, I got that was um I. I go to uh, estate sales and, uh, you know, just, just um, auctions, I guess. Yeah. But um, I went to one that morning, and I think I could talk to you that evening, but uh, I was looking online, and this is all stuff that everybody can, can, can find. You just go look at the estate sales that are happening every day around town. Um, I happened to see in the corner of the top shelf. Like, like a photo? In, yeah. It was two bottles, and I couldn't see it super clearly but they looked like they would be old and um so you so just went on a whim i went there and uh yeah i mean the, i don't remember how much there was they were they were pricey like i but they almost looked like they were um like uh like potpourri or something like sure. they could be a bed bath beyond and be sold for 15 dollars because it makes the bathroom look nicer or something yeah and i was concerned about that but it was the uh, and this is what caused me to start researching glass manufacturing so I ended up reading all these papers that were written about how to identify uh, old glass bottles that were pre-machine made going into the first machine made and like the different types of machines. So that's how you start getting into this rabbit hole. And I learned a lot by by getting those those two bottles because uh, I was determined to find out like exactly how when they were made, what year they were made, because there wasn't much you know, identifying marks. The tax strips weren't around yeah. for another 20 years or so. Um, but uh, yeah, it, was, it all became a very educational experience. I forgot that you are the one I picked those up from. Because I, I buy at auction, I buy from you, I buy from a guy locally named Bill Kerman. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I buy from all over the place and I completely forgot that both of those came from you. Uh, they, they were tremendous, delicious, <laughs> uh, very weird, and it did taste like actual ginger, like spicy, 
vegetal ginger, not like yeah. you know, not like what we taste now in like a soda or something. It's an odd pour. It's a very odd pour. Yeah. Yeah, so um, if you go, if, what's it called? The, uh, these whiskey, this pre prohibition whiskey men, there's some website that's called like these pre pro whiskey men or something like that. Sure. Um, that's where I found the information on one of the one of the makers. And uh, there's quite a bit of info, actually. I mean, it's, and, and you, can, you can see where they first established their shop from like the late 1800s all the way through to where he passed out under the sun, I think. And, uh, and then ultimately, when he died, um, I think one of the shops caught fire um sometime in the early 1900s also but um but yeah that's a pretty interesting website actually because so w- w- we're we're getting close to running out of time what, what would you make as a recommendation to those out there wanting to know what's the best way to I mean, it doesn't have to be something from the 80s but what's the best path a tip you could give to someone who's still looking looking for older bottles yeah something? what do you think the best states are um well I don't want to. I don't want to give away too much on that. Um, <laughs> Are you still looking? I mean, uh, yeah, I still enjoy enjoy honey. I can tell you, I've been to uh, I've been to California a few times. Um, it's just such a huge state um, that there's. You know, I always find things there. Um, I'm still finding stuff in Texas, honestly. Uh, the Dallas area. It's amazing how. Uh, I don't know how many Dallas people are going to be watching or listening. But Quite a bit, yeah. Okay, well, the Dallas hunters are lazy, <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, they they all drive around in the their their vicinity. But as I mean, j- just going to Terrell, which is thirty minutes outside Dallas, I found crazy bottles, um, just tons of tons of great stuff. And for all there's, there's so many Dallas hunters, but they just don't do much. The, the photo that I sent you of all the old Taylor and, and yeah. The, Crazy, crazy photos, yeah. Yeah, that was an hour outside Dallas. Yeah, and I'll have these photos sent over to Jack to kind of maybe we can show a few uh, while we're talking throughout the episode, just just a few of the photos. Yeah. Ridiculous bottles. Yeah, uh, and a lot of those, I mean, yeah, so a lot of those photos were from outside Dallas. The bottle that I, I got from 1940, the Blue Ribbon Bottles and Bond yeah. Bourbon, that was uh, North Texas. That was close to the Oklahoma border. And um, I had to go back up there a couple of times to – Talk to the owner into selling it to me. To selling it to you, how much? Um, I think like maybe two fifty, three hundred, sure. something like that. Well, I mean, well worth it in yeah. my opinion. Um, and plus, the drive up there is great. I mean, there's 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 a lot of cool stores. Uh, so, what I would say, first off, do your research. Um, if you really want to do this and be successful at it, you have to study it. And so, before I ever went to Illinois or, or ever went to California, I did spend weeks uh, researching all the licenses. Um, you know, studying when they were first issued. If you can't find original dates, look at just numeric, uh, you know, like license number of 100 versus 10,000. 100 is probably going to be earlier and and start mapping it out that way. So you're eliminating stores that are newer that are impossible for them to have something. Yeah, yeah if they've been open in the last five years, they're not going right. to have um, Unless the DBA is the same. So, you know, like in, in, in Texas, you can also look up the DBAs and then you go to the Secretary of State web- website and you can see who owns those DBAs. Um, I know that in, when I went to Indiana, almost every older liquor store was owned by like the same six people, um, but it would be broken up like two people or here, two people there. But it was like always, this, it ended up being like six people that owned like almost every older liquor store. But uh, yeah, I mean, so just do, do your research. It takes time, but then you're not wasting time when you're actually when there. When you're there, yeah. Yeah, and you, you get rewarded because you, you do find things. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot left. I'm not cleaning. I'm not clearing out the stores. So. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. everybody puts their pitchforks down when you say that each yeah, time. So. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I I can't thank you enough. Uh, today's episode flew by. I feel like there's so much more to talk about. Yeah, it's just fun. Um, but uh, thanks so much for coming by. Thank you so much for sharing your Ezra Brooks 15 year. Uh, it sure is a uh, damn fine bottle. And uh, yeah, cheers. Yeah. Balcone's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.